Hey, what's up, Street Talks? Eric from the Eric from Street Photography Blog. So I just wanted to do a quick video in case if you guys have a film Leica, a film camera, how this whole thing works. So the basic notion is this. Once you've shot a roll of film, you can see the counter. It says um, 35. And there's some things you just got to do. So the first thing is there's this little switch here that says R. You just flip that down to the side like that and this is where the the film like MP is unique from the M6 and other variants is that it has this little knob here on the side and you could pull this up so you could see in terms of uh, the design it pops up and actually it's kind of a cool little trick that they did with um, the new like M10 camera where it does pop up as well. And it's, it's just kind of fun because it's just kind of an homage to the old school film like this. Anyways, so you, you look at it and you see the, it says R and it's twirling that way. So basically what you do is this. So we've pulled it up and you have to just keep twisting it. Keep twisting this until it is done twisting. So you just keep twisting this. And the, the question is, how long do you have to keep twisting it before you know it's, it's done twisting? It takes probably longer you think. And in terms of when you know it's done, you keep twisting it, keep twisting it, keep twisting it. And distinctly at the end, there will be kind of like, it feels like a, a snap or in terms of the haptic feedback you get in your hands, you're going to know that it's, it's done spooling. So you keep spooling, keep spooling. And obviously I'm doing this one handed, so it's a uh, way slower than if I did it with uh, two hands. And actually the ir irony is that in terms of the rewinder, this is actually way slower than the Leica M6, which is the film Leica I owned before. So the M6 is actually superior in terms of the rewinding mechanism, but the downside of the M6 is the rewinding mechanism. It's actually a little bit flimsy. It's like even mine had issues after a while and it kind of snapped. And there's also some third party Leica MP rewinder knob thingies that you get on the internet. but. I generally think it just adds a little bit of bulk to the camera. It's not really, not really necessary. So, still rewinding this bad boy. Okay, so you, you might have not heard it, but essentially it distinctly snapped. And you, you know, when it's done because you keep rewinding it, and there's just essentially no play. There's, it's just a little bit too easy. So when you're done with that, you see this little guy here. Just push this down and it will fit nice and smooth to the top, right? Then uh, this, is, this is the fun part. So you take your camera, you flip it upside down, and you open it by popping up this little knob down here with your fingernail. Like so, and you just twist it, twist, 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 all right, and it's open, and you just pop this off. So this is actually the thing. You could see this little notch here, it's a notch there, and that's where this whole thing comes apart. Okay. So now the camera's open. Don't be scared. <laughs> the first time I remember I opened this, I was uh, scared to death. Essentially, this is the bottom of the camera. This is what it should look like. That's your film right here. It's done spooling. Some Kodak Portrait 400. And the bottom of the camera essentially looks like this. So once you take out the roll of film, if you had another roll of film, you just kind of stick it in there and then you 
stick in the film, you pull out the little film edge and you weave it through into here. That looks like yay. And in another video, I'll do it. How, I'll show a video on how you could actually rewind it. But anyway, it's pretty cool. You can see the mechanism is pretty simple. It's just closed like that. If you're curious what these numbers mean, this is the ISO because the, the camera has a built-in meter. And if you wanted to close this, you take, so this is what the bottom looks like. Right? And you, you essentially know which side it goes on because there's going to be the sharp edge here in the left of the camera. Oops, sorry. I was thinking about the wrong way. So this side goes to that edge, right? Kind of snap that on there. And once it's nice and snug on that side, snug on this side, you could take this and just twist it back. Twist it back. Right, and it's nice and snug. And just close it. And if you're curious what all this gold stuff is, this is what Leica Nerds called brassing. Essentially the more you use your camera, the more beautiful, you know, wabi-sabi, patina, wear marks show. And it's just kind of a point of pride for a lot of people who shoot with their cameras, so you can see there's like a little bit of brassing here. Shout out to Bellamy Hunt from Japan Camera Hunter for helping me source this camera a few years ago. You're the best. And some things that are interesting to know. So you see these little two red dots. If you're taking pictures, so for example, you take a, let's say you take a picture. So you wind it back, cock, rewind, cock, rewind, cock. If you actually have film inside, those two red dots will actually slightly turn. So you actually know that it has film. And sometimes the, the trepidation that people have is that they don't know if they have film in the camera or not. How do you know? I think it's, I think it's this guy, which essentially lets you know. And you could even see, as you're cocking the shutter or whatever, there's this mechanism here, which actually tracks how many pictures you're shooting. So you can see, the more I'm shooting it, that number is going up. To know it's taking pictures, right? And another tip to know if your camera actually has film in it or not, because sometimes I forget, is you could actually just, you see this, uh, this little guy here? You could pick it up. You could actually just twist it a little bit because if there's film in it, you twist a little bit, you'll actually feel the tension. But right now, there's essentially no tension. So there's obviously no film inside. So if you wanted to reset the whole thing, once again, the front of the camera, you see this little guy here. Click that down. Open this guy. Turn it. All right. Just kind of open this guy. All right, you got no film in there, no problemo. Put this thing back on. Sorry, I'm not so good at operating the camera with just one hand. So you can just stick this on here. Closed butt, yay. Twist it, close it, and you got it there. All right, so anyways, I'll try to do some more tutorials in their near future. And uh, until then, uh, just some practical tips. If you're new to film photography, uh, I think the best color film is a uh, Kodak Portra 400. Excellent skin tones. It's called Portra, P-O-R-T-R-A, because it stands for portrait. So it's really nice for color skin tones, for, for the reds, uh, the oranges, the yellows. 
And uh, the cheapest place to get on is just get on Amazon or B&H Photo. And for black and white film, I personally prefer uh, Kodak Tri-X 400.